on the record, in the absence of the panel, the defendant and his attorneys and the state attorneys are present. One attorney from each side, please approach and grab the most recent copy of the charge. I will give you about five minutes to look at it since you all have already reviewed uh, mostly. There were a couple of things added. One, the charge must contain the possible conditions. That wasn't included initially. It is there now. Uh, initially, there was language about the defendant not testifying. Obviously, he testified, so that was removed. So I'll give you all some time to look over the charge. And please indicate to the court when you have finished reviewing the charge off the record. OK. Let's go on the record. In the absence of the panel, the defendant and his attorneys, the state's attorneys are also present as well. And you all have both had an opportunity to review the charge. Is that correct? Yes, Your Honor. Yes, Your Honor. Okay. Now, if there are additions, they have to be straight out of the code. So if you're asking for me to include something, you need to have the code section. So we'll go page by page. I'll ask state any objections, any additions, and then I'll ask the same of defense. First page, state. No objections. Any additions? Yes, Your Honor. Where you Hold, counsel, I'm not done with the state yet. Additions or objections? No, Your Honor. Okay, defense. First paragraph where you rape by indictment with the offense of injury to child causing serious bodily injury we just want two words added by omission how does the indictment read does the staff attorney tracked the the indictment the name of the charge is that with the code section so the the indictment says injury to a, to a child um, by omission is a subsection that doesn't actually say that on the indictment we uh, states uh, view on this is we're going to leave it in the court's discretion. We don't have an objection. We don't need it in there. We're going to leave it up to the court. Let me see the indictment. Okay. The actual penal code section 2204 reads injury to a child, so it will remain injury to a child. Did you stop my objection? Yes. Anything else on the first page? Um, bottom paragraph again references the offense injured to a child. So just wherever it is in the in the proposed charge, I just wanted the language to include by omission. I understand it's court's rule. Okay. We'll go page by page though. Okay. All right. So nothing else on the first page. Just on the bottom paragraph, Your Honor. That's it on the first page. Okay. Second page. State two questions. What are your answers? No objections. No additions. Defense. No corrections, no, no additions, Your Honor. Third page, state. No objections, no additions, Your Honor. Defense. No objections, no additions, Your Honor. Okay. Fourth page, state. No additions, no objections, Your Honor. Defense. No objections, no additions, Your Honor. All right. Fifth page, state. No additions, no objections, Your Honor. Defense. No objections, no additions, Your Honor. All right. First verdict form, state. No additions, no objections, Your Honor. Defense. Previous objection, Your Honor, uh, to include by omission, Your Honor, I understand the court's ruling. Okay. Second verdict from state. No additions, no objections, Your Honor. Defense. Same objection, Your Honor, at the end of injury to a child causing serious bodily injury, I would ask that by omission be included. Okay. I understand the court's ruling. Okay. Thank you very much. So that's the entirety of the charge. Now, we need to go over the exhibit list. I'm going to start with the state's exhibits. I'm going to notate what the court has marked as admitted and what the court has marked as admitted for record purposes only. I'll do the same for defense. When I finish with both lists, okay, you all are going to, will be off the record at the time, you all will approach, you all will make sure that everything that's been admitted is in a stack and everything that's been admitted for record purposes only is in a separate stack. Okay, so then that way, if the jurors want to review the evidence, then we'll already have it ready. Additionally, state you will need to get your investigator to get us a clean laptop. Let me tell you how this works. If they want to review the video, because we were so <clears throat> thoughtful in the way that we designed our system, it is impossible for the jurors to press pause on a video in the back. The only thing they can do is watch it in its entirety. I want them to be able to press pause, rewind, press play, if that's what they want to do. And so we need a clean laptop. Counsel, I'm going to explain to you how this will work with the laptop. Once the laptop is here, both sides will look at the laptop. 
You will inspect it to make sure that it's clean and that there are no hidden messages on the laptop. Once you all confirm the same, we'll go back on the record and you will state the same. Or you'll state, Judge, it's not clean. We need to find another laptop. Do you all understand that? Yes, sure. Okay. So now with the state's exhibits, the court has 1 through 34 that are admitted for all purposes. 35 through 44 that were admitted for all purposes. 45 for record purposes. Forty-six and forty-eight state. What are your notes about forty-six and forty-eight? Forty-six, 46 and forty-eight. I had for all purposes. All purposes. It was objected to by the defense, but the objection was overruled. That's why I have the marks. Okay. So forty-five record purposes. Forty-six all purposes. Forty-seven record purposes. Forty-eight all purposes. Forty-nine through. 68 all purposes, 68A record purposes, 69 all purposes, 70 through 82, or excuse me, 70 through 79 all purposes, 80 record purposes, 81, 82 all purposes, 100 and 101 record purposes. And then state regarding the, the remainder of the ME photos, we didn't offer the remainder, those were the ones that were in the packet. I believe I had offered them. If I had not offered them for record purposes, I would do that now. Um, that was for illustration as to the photographs that were not offered in evidence, the graphic photos that were not. Okay. Give me the numbers on those. That's 102 through 134, Your Honor. Okay, and then. One hundred two through one thirty four record purposes only. Okay. Now on defendant's exhibit list, one through twenty, all purposes. Twenty one um, does not exist and has been removed. And the record was made this morning about, uh, I guess, the fact that they were just misnumbered. That one was misnumbered. Okay. Sure. Perfect. And then twenty two through twenty nine, all purposes. Thirty through 74, all purposes, and 75 through 86, all purposes, correct? That's correct. Okay, so now you all are going to come up and make sure that we have the record purposes stack and the all purposes stack, and then let me know when you have finished with that, and we'll go on the record to confirm the same. Make your approach? Record. Yes. Take all, of all right, let's go back on the record. We're in the absence of the panel, the defendants, attorneys, and the state's attorneys are present. Attorneys, have you all been able to get all of the uh, exhibits organized? Yes, sure. Okay. Yes, sure. Okay. Every exhibit that was noted as admitted for all purposes is in one area, and those for record purposes only in another area? That's correct, Your Honor. Okay. That's yes. correct, Your Honor. And then the state has provided a clean uh, laptop and defense. You've been able to review the laptop? I have, Your Honor. And there's nothing on the laptop? Nothing that I found. Okay, perfect. And you all also tested uh, the video from both state defense and the laptop was able to play both? Yes, Your Honor. Okay, perfect. Okay. I want to check attorneys. How much time are you asking for for closing arguments? I'm asking for a half an hour, Your Honor. And counsel? Half an hour should be sufficient. All right. You know, I'll give you 40 minutes. You give me back whatever you want. Thank you. Thank you. And then state, what kind of warnings would you like? Um, when I'm, I doubt I'll get there, but if I'm down to three minutes, will you let me know? Okay. Are you splitting argument with anyone? We're going to split. Uh, this Thomas and I are going to okay. split. So you want 20 and 20? Um, she was going to take about 10. Yeah. Okay. So you want a, a warning at your 10-minute mark? Please, Judge. Okay. And in defense, what type of warning? When I've gone over a minute. <laughs> I'm just right. When I've got about a minute left, Your Honor, okay. let me know. I'm going to give you a two-minute warning. Fair enough. Okay. Just so I don't interrupt your last 60 seconds of thought. Okay. All right. For the members in the audience, I want to remind you that 
You may hear or see things that you either agree with, you don't agree with. I received reports yesterday that there were members of the audience that were nodding their heads in agreement or in disagreement or exhaling. And I want to warn you, I've been very clear throughout this trial, that if you display any type of emotion, you will be removed from the courtroom. All cell phones should be away unless you are a member of the media or you are an investigator for either the state or defense. Otherwise, there should be no reason for you to have your phone out, so I won't wonder what you're doing with the phone. Does everyone understand that? <coughs> Perfect. Chair, I'm ready. Just now, folks, with the computer. Yes, you can actually set it up on the uh, witness stand. All rise. Please court, ladies and gentlemen of the jury, Mr. Matthews rests. State. We'll close your honor. Defense. We'll close as well. Right. Members of the jury, you've heard all the evidence in this matter. I will now review with you the charge of the court. You do not have to memorize the charge. You will be provided the original in the back. It reads as follows. The defendant, Wesley Mon Matthews, stands charged by indictment with the offense of injury to a child causing serious bodily injury alleged to have been committed in Dallas County, Texas on or about the seventh day of October 2017. To this charge, the defendant has pleaded guilty. He has persisted in entering his plea of guilty, notwithstanding that the court, as required by law, has admonished him of the consequences. It plainly appearing to the court that the defendant is mentally competent, has been advised of the range of punishment attached to this offense, and that this plea of guilty is made freely and voluntarily. His plea is by the court received. You are instructed to find the defendant guilty as charged in the indictment and limit your deliberations under all the law and evidence in this case to the question of punishment, which is now your duty to assess. You were further instructed that the punishment authorized for the offense of injury to a child is imprisonment in the institutional division of the Texas Department of Criminal Justice for any term of years not more than 99 years and not less than five years or life, and in addition thereto, a fine may be assessed not to exceed $10,000. A sentence that is assessed must either be served or probated and the jury may not provide that a portion of the sentence be served and that the balance be probated. You were instructed that the court will determine the terms and conditions of community su uh, supervision, excuse me, if it is assessed, and may at any time during the period of community supervision alter or modify those conditions. The court may impose, but is not limited to, the following conditions. Number one, commit no offense against the laws of this or any other state of the United States. Avoid injurious or vicious habits. Avoid persons or places of disreputable or harmful character. Report to the supervision officer as directed by the judge or supervision officer and obey all rules and regulations of the community supervision and corrections department. Permit the supervision officer to visit his him at home, in, at his place of employment or elsewhere, work faithfully at a suitable employment as far as possible, remain within a specified place, pay the fine if one is assessed, and court costs whether a fine be assessed or not in one or several sums, and make restitution or reparation in any sum that the judge shall determine, support his dependents, submit to testing for alcohol or controlled substances, Submit to electronic monitoring. 
participate for a time specified by the court in any community-based program, including a community service work program. A defendant is eligible for the jury to recommend community supervision only if, before the trial begins, the defendant files a written sworn motion with the court that the defendant has not previously been convicted of a felony in this or any other state and the jury enters in the verdict a finding that the information in the defendant's motion is true. In this case, the defendant has filed before trial his sworn motion in which he requests that in the event he is convicted, that he be granted community supervision if the punishment assessed by you is not more than 10 years confinement in the Texas Department of Criminal Justice and you further find that he has never been convicted of a felony in this or any other state. Under the law applicable in this case, the defendant, if sentenced to a term of imprisonment, may earn time off the period of incarceration imposed through the award of good conduct time. Prison authorities may award good conduct time to a prisoner who exhibits good behavior, diligence in carrying out prison work assignments, and attempts at rehabilitation. If a prisoner engages in misconduct, prison authorities may also take away all or part of any good conduct time earned by the prisoner. It is also possible that the length of time for which the defendant will be in prison might be reduced by the award of parole. Under the law applicable in this case, if the defendant is sentenced to a term of imprisonment, he will not become eligible for parole until the actual time served equals one half of the sentence imposed or 30 years, whichever is less, without consideration of any good conduct time the defendant may earn. Eligibility for parole does not guarantee that parole will be granted. It cannot accurately be predicted how the parole law and good conduct time might be applied to this defendant if he is sentenced to a term of imprisonment because the application of these laws will depend on decisions made by prison and parole authorities. You may consider the existence of the parole law in good conduct time. However, you are not to consider the extent to which good conduct time may be awarded to or forfeited by this particular defendant. You are not to consider the manner in which the parole law may be applied to this particular defendant. You are instructed that if there is any testimony before you in the case regarding the defendants having committed other acts or participated in other transactions other than the offense alleged against him in this case, you cannot consider such other acts or transactions, if any, unless you first find and believe beyond a reasonable doubt that the defendant committed such other acts or participated in such transactions, if any, but if you do not so believe, or if you have a reasonable doubt thereof, you will not consider such testimony for any purposes. You are instructed that in assessing the defendant's punishment, which you will show in your verdict, you may take into consideration all the facts shown by the evidence admitted before you in the full trial of this case and the law as submitted to you in this charge. You are further instructed that your verdict must be unanimous and shall be arrived at by due deliberation and not by drawing lots or any other method of chance. You shall not add any combination of numbers and divide the answer. You are the exclusive judges of the facts proved, the credibility of the witnesses, and the weight to be given their testimony, but you are bound to receive and follow the law from the court. The first verdict form reads, we, the jury, unanimously find the defendant guilty of the offense of injury to a child causing serious bodily injury as charged in the indictment and hereby assess a punishment at, and there's a blank, life or years, five to 99, imprisonment, and a fine of zero to $10,000. The four person will sign and print his or her name. The second form reads, we, the jury, unanimously find the defendant guilty of the offense of injury to a child causing serious bodily injury as charged in the indictment and assess punishment at, there's a blank, five to 10 years imprisonment and a fine of another blank, zero to $10,000. We further find that the defendant has never been convicted of a felony in this state or any other state 
and recommend that the judge suspend the imposition of the sentence and place the defendant on community supervision. Each side has 40 minutes for closing arguments. It is now 11-16. State, you may proceed.